Now, wait a minute, I'm in the wrong place. Praise God, I get in a state of confusion again instead of the state of Mississippi. Let oh, me give it back here, Lord. I get a bad habit of that habit, but I'm going to tell you something. Somebody turned the Holy Ghost loose in this place since I was here last time. He's, he's, he's come in a lot stronger than the last time I was here. God has been magnified in this house. Something's been going on in here. I can feel it. I can see it. I know it. I know it. I mean, something's been going on, and it's good. You know, I'm in the last days. It's good. Jesus said, where would I find anybody in faith? Your church house is going to get lower in attendance. You can look for it. If it's already happened, you know, it's just another sign of what's going on. Oh, 10. Chapter 10 and verse 6. It says, but the righteousness that is by faith says, do not say in your heart, we will ascend into heaven. That is to bring Christ down. Or who will descend into the deep? That is to bring Christ up from the dead. But what does it say? The Word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith we are proclaiming. We need to be proclaiming a Word of faith. See, faith is the opposite of fear. And so we have got a Word of faith. You know, you give somebody faith to believe in. See, God just wants somebody to believe in Him. I mean, how many of you have wanted somebody to believe in you? Yes, Lord. Yes, sir. I mean, everybody wants somebody to believe in them. To look at them and think, I believe in you. I'm going to tell you, even the mightiest men, the most powerful men that, that I've known in my life, no matter who they were or where they were or what they did, they were all looking for somebody to believe in them. They were looking for somebody to believe in them. When you believe in people that love the Lord, you know, you're you're you got a faith. You need a faith have you need to have a faith in God's people right. as well. Yeah. You see, God's people, his chosen people, his the ones that are anointed by him and the ones that, that love him. You need to respect them. Yes, right. You see, right. Romans 6 it says 17, it says here. So, no, it says here right here in verse... It says the Word is near you. It is in your mouth and in your heart. That is the Word of faith that we are proclaiming. You see, you got to have faith in God. you got to believe in God. He just wants somebody to believe in Him. Just like when you want somebody to believe in you. He just wants somebody to believe in you. Believe He's real. You believe His Word will do what He says it will do. It says that if you confess with your mouth Jesus is Lord and believe in your hearts that God raised Him from the dead, you will be saved. For it is with your heart that you believe and are justified and it is with your mouth that you confess and are saved. As the Scripture says, anyone who trusts in Him will never be put to shame. You know, it was like a song you were singing. It says, God save me from sin and shame. Yeah. It says you will never be put to shame. Yeah. It says for there is no difference between Jew and Gentile. The same Lord is Lord of all and richly blesses all who call on Him. For everyone who calls on the name of the Lord will be saved. Amen. Mm. Yeah, that's a precious promise. Amen. That's a precious promise. That's a promise. And it's a promise that belongs to all of us, it says. Doesn't matter who you are. Yeah. How then can they call on the one they have not believed in? And how can they believe in the one of whom they have not heard? And how can they hear without someone preaching to them? And how can they preach unless they are sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of those who bring good news. But now, all the Israelites accepted the good news for Isaiah says, Lord who has believed our message. Consequently, faith comes from hearing the message and the message is heard through the Word of God. Faith comes by hearing and hearing by from the Word of God. If you don't come into God's house and listen to the Word of God, you're not going to have faith. Faith comes by hearing the Word of God. we got to have faith. We're living in a time when we'll tell you something if you don't have faith, you're going you're gonna to give up. Yes, you're going to give up. Yes. You're going to lay down yes. and just let the devil have his way. Yes. Bow down. Yes. It's like my brother saying, we got to put the devil under our feet. Yes. Greater is God who is in you than the devil you put behind you. Yes. 
You know, we got to have that faith, but the faith that says comes from hearing and hearing the Word of God. So many people are not in the church today. They're not listening to the Word of God. So they're not getting no faith. So they're going back out. They're going to live their life this week. They're going to be in the same place they were at the week before and the week before that. They're not going to grow any stronger. They're not going to have anything more in their life because they missed out on something. They missed out on hearing the Word of God. Mm. The last element I want to look at is, is in the book of Matthew. In chapter 3. You know, I just thank God that when I'm weak, He is strong. Thank you. You know. Yes. I don't need to tell you folks that we're living in the last days. You know it. You know it. It's gone. We're there. I remember a few years ago I was preaching and a lot of people was teaching. We was thinking we was in the beginning of the end. I want to tell you something. We're rapidly moving into the end of the end now. Things have changed again and again. The devil is busy, but God's busier. The devil is mighty, but God is almighty. You know, in Matthew chapter 3, John the Baptist is talking about Jesus. He says in verse 11, he says, I baptize you with water for repentance. But after me will come one who is more powerful than I, whose sandals I am not fit to carry. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and with fire. Now I like this. I like that part. I mean, we're talking about three times we're going to get baptized. Three. Somebody talking about three times? You know there was such a thing as three times. Well, yes, I baptize you with water. And he's going to baptize you with the Holy Spirit. And then he's going to turn around and he's going to baptize you with fire. That's a fire. That's a fire now. Come on now. That's where the joy of the Lord comes in. That fire will burn up all that depression in your life. That fire will burn up all that confusion. Remove that confusion. Give you peace. That fire of God will change things in your life. It will start things on the turning around. If they've been going the wrong way, they'll start coming the right way. It's the fire of God that's missing. The fire of God's missing in a lot of places. You've got to get the fire in your life. Personally. It belongs to you. Yes, Lord. Yes, Lord. yes, Lord. It says His yes. winnowing fork is in His hand. Yes. And He will clear His threshing floor. Yes. His threshing floor, that's the earth. Yes. He's going to clear the earth. Yes. Gathering His wheat. Yes. He's going to gather in the children that He knows. Yes. The ones that, like we said in 1 John, yes. that we represented God. We looked like God. Yes. He's going to gather them in. Yes. And into His barn. Yes. Into heaven. He's going to gather us into that barn up in heaven and burn. And he's going to burn up the chaff. Yeah. The unsaved. Yeah. With unquenchable fire, it says. Yes. That's right, preacher. Yes, Did you see that? Yes. That fire. That fire will change things. You know, God's telling me, you know, He said, He said, He said, fear, faith, and fire. Yes. He said, good faith, good fear. You know, you gotta you need gotta have a good fear of God. You gotta perfect love will cast out the bad fear in your life. You know, God wants you to have that fear of Him, respecting Him. Not scared of what He's gonna do to you or hurt you all the time, because He loves you. You can't walk scared to death of God, but you gotta walk in the fear of knowing that you can't live according to this way of this world and be disobedient to God. Amen. And you got to have the faith. Yes. You got to believe in the Word of God. What you've heard, you've heard it so many times. What's happened? Some of us have been in the church so long that we've heard it so many times that we become numb, and it's not a fire in it no more. It's not. It needs to become new again. What I heard ten years ago needs to be heard again. This time I need to wake up, open my ears, open my eyes, and start using what I've heard. Living the way I've been taught. Changing my destiny by my choices. Hallelujah. You've got a choice. 
of how you're going to live and what you're going to have. And the faith, how much faith have you got? Oh, the more faith you got, the more you're going to receive. The more faith you got to believe, the more you're going to receive. Jesus called people. He said, you have little faith. And the disciples came to Him and said, Lord, increase our faith. So I'll sit down if I don't have enough faith and I'll just pray to God. i said, God, give me more faith. Give me more faith. I need more faith, Lord. Especially when you're living in that state of confusion. Somewhere between Mississippi and, and California, you know. I mean, that's no place for nobody wants to be. But yeah. there's no peace when you got confusion. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Amen. Uh -huh. You know, there's a <laughs> hallelujah. Thank you. It's time. It's time, people. It's time to do some things. It's time. It's time. It's time, it's time to get happy. It's time to let you let you let yourself loose yeah. and be happy with the Lord. Yeah. We need to cast off this old depression, this old negative talking, and talk positive. This brother right here has got some of the, mo the most joy, the, one, the strongest walking joy of anybody I've ever known. And I'm going to tell you something. I, I'll be darned. I'll pray with him. I'll stand with him. And I'll pray. The devil ain't going to take his joy. If he starts to take his joy, I'm going to pray with him. Because this brother, I'm going to tell you something. What you got in you, you're going to give out. You're going to receive. If you got love in you, somebody's going to feel it. You're going to give it. If you got joy in you, somebody's going to get it. If you got peace in you, somebody's going to get it. If you got faith in you, somebody's going to get it. If you got all these bad things, fear in you, somebody's going to get it. If you got all these bad spirits in you, somebody's going to get them when you get around you. They're going to catch them just like they catch a cold. They're going to catch those spirits. Amen. Now we got to be, we got to be right with God. We got to be there. We got to get there. You know. I mean, you'll never arrive all the way. Paul the apostle said, "I never arrived." But I'm gonna tell you something. He strove. He says, "I fought the good fight of faith. I run the race all the way. I didn't quit." I'm gonna tell you something. I've been down, but I hadn't been licked. The devil did his best, but his best wasn't good enough. God loves us. And he's going to do something. I'm going to tell you something. He loves us black and white. Yes, Jesus loves us. Yes, Jesus loves us. When we are weak, he is strong. Yes, Jesus loves us. That's the song. Little children's song. He said, you come like with a childlike faith. You know, you believe like a child. You know, just, I said it, you believe it. And I'll give it to you. You know, it's that simple. You know, and yes, Jesus loves me. Yes, Jesus loves me. For well, the Bible tells me so. You know, that, that, that's, that's sweet. That's precious. You, get, you know, you can't get much better than that. You know, just say, yes, Jesus loves me. Well, the Bible tells me so. When I am weak, He is strong. Yes, Jesus loves me. Oh, you're right. Yes, He loves me. Yes, Jesus
today remain standing. You here today don't know Jesus in the part of your sin. You have never accepted Christ as your personal Savior. You need to come for Come and live with Jesus Christ, the Son of God. You need to hung, bleeding, died on Calvary Cross. And rose the third day of your sin. The Bible said, Thou shalt be saved. That Christ will come to your heart. We pray with you. Maybe you're here and want to make this your church home. You need to come. Come out and take this seat. We accept you in. You come by letter. Christian experience, count day for baptism. Or uh, you might just come accept Christ and go somewhere else. We'll help you. Step out right now. Special prayer. Special prayer. Step out. Special prayer. Step out. sickness in our body. You care about the infirmities that we've been carrying. We thank you, Lord, that you care about those problems that we've had on the job. You care about those problems in our marriages or in our families, Lord God, with our children. Lord God, we thank you that you are working, Lord God, when we don't even see you working. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to help us, Lord God, to get through these things that we've been pressing yes, toward, Lord God. Yes, the things that the enemy's been putting on us, God. Yes, yes. We thank you, Lord, that you're going to bring us to a higher place with you. Yes, you're going to get us out of the depths of darkness, Lord God, when we fall them, and you're going to lift us back up. Yes. We thank you, Lord God, right now, that you're the same today as you were yesterday, yes. and you'll be the same tomorrow. Yes. You're the same God of the Bible. Yes. And, Lord God, we're going to serve you. Yes. I thank you, Lord, for the faithful few that are here today. Because they do have the faith. They didn't have to be here. They chose to come, Lord God. They knew I was even going to be here, and they still chose to come. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Because I am nothing. But God, you are everything. I can do nothing except through Christ who strengthens me. And I thank you, Lord God, for the strength of Christ for each and every person in here, man, woman, and child, Lord God, today to let that strength fall upon their head, Lord God, and come into their spirit and come on, Lord God, let it follow out of here with them, Lord God, as they leave. In the name of Jesus, we thank you. Thank you, Lord. Thank you. Oh, Yes, He loves us. Yes, He loves us. For the
Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We claim it, Lord. Right now, in the name of Jesus, we claim your promise. Walking by your word, in the name of Jesus. Thank you. Thank you. Consider it though. Be seated for a few minutes. Thank you. Amen. God bless you. You be on three weeks. Two weeks or whatever. About 15 days. Amen. We thank God for you. Thank God for the message. That God has given you and thank God for your wife and children. You all have been a big inspiration to us today. Pastor Paul will come out with the last words and he'll give the benediction of nothing else. And uh, we're going to get ready to make our way to class there. Amen. Amen. On that blue bus. Amen. God bless you all. Amen. 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 Y'all got anything here? Anything here? Anything? <coughs>